We really should stop this fighting. Otherwise, we'll miss the fireworks. There won't be any fireworks. And here we go. And welcome, everybody, to Socket. I am the great and powerful King of Kings, Prince of All That Is Awesome. Derek, how are you this evening on this February 11th of the whole year that is 2021? Ah, uh, another Friday Eve on this fucking show. <laughs> Man, let me tell you what, my week has just been amazing. Amazing. You know, um... The, you know, the, um, the stuff that I have been, um, dealing with as far as what happened Monday, um, the, uh, the infamous <sighs> flat earth episode. I have been absolutely bombarded by emails and comments and direct messages stating some of the most vile, disgusting comments I have ever heard. I mean, I have never been the victim of... I've been the victim of hate before. I enjoy the hate. I welcome the hate. But holy crap. It, it, this is like in fucking sane. Like, n no two ways around it. This shit is nuts. And these guys have just latched on to insanity. I mean, they have just completely any point or any validity they want to bring to the conversation. Completely went out the window the moment they started using words like retard and fat ass and ignorance and, you know, just nastiness. Just straight up nasty. Um, and it's, it's pathetic, but it's hilarious. I mean, absolutely hilarious. You know, um... I did this on purpose. And they don't believe that. They don't think that. I'm going to release a, a video tomorrow. And maybe a short, like, you know, special episode podcast in regards to this. About some of the thought processes. And I'm going to cover some of their their comments and read you some of the comments and call some of these people out. Because it's, it's, it's cray cray. Absolutely crazy. Um, so I'm not going to talk much more about it because like I said, I will have an episode, um, like a little 15 minute, you know, response to them coming out tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. Um, but tonight I do have a guest. Um, however, he's running a bit late and I just talked to his PR person. That was where the stutter came in. Um. Just waiting on him to come on. So, while we wait on him, let's uh, let's talk about life. And welcome to the Alexa Prize, a university competition to advance AI. What the? I'll get you a social bot now. When you're done, say uh, stop. Alexa, ask you for your stop. What the hell was that? Did I say anything that would cause a wake up word? I mean, really? That was that was interesting. That was fun and exciting. Good old 
Echo. I'm not going to say her name. <laughs> um, so let's give you a little bit of a life update here and just kind of tell you where I'm at and kind of um, give you the 411, the skinny, on uh, how things have progressed over the last few months. So as m- most of you guys know, uh, back in November, my wife told me she wanted a divorce um, in an absolutely crushing blow. And, and like I've said before, I mean, I saw it coming. I knew it was coming. Her and I had talked about it previously and we were working toward a goal and, you know, and then before the end of that goal, she just decided, fuck it, I'm done, which sucks. But what am I going to do? I mean, I, I, you know, I mean, it is what it is, but you know, it's, it's now, you know, February and it's been, you know, four months since she's told me that and, um, three months, whatever it's been. Yeah. Beginning of, it was the, the three months. Yeah. But it, it's, it's not as bad as one would think, you know, it's, um, I'm still hurts. Don't get me wrong, but um, I feel I'm at a place now where I'm content in in my life choices, and um, I'm moving on quite nicely. Um, I haven't had any real down, depressed days lately. Tuesday, I I kind of did, um, because I couldn't stay out of my comment section from the the hate from the video, but that was mostly because I missed my meds on Monday night, and I was just overwhelmed, but I was fine, I I, I took some, uh, I took a CBD gummy, I took a Klonopin, which I, I did not want to do, but I was just all up in my head, and I couldn't take my Lexapro until that night, so I was like, you know what, I just need something to calm me down, and that was the first clonopin I've taken in months, but um, the CBD between the CBD and the uh, the clonopin, I was feeling much better. And then w- yesterday, I-, I was doing great. Um, back to laughing at all these comments and back to uh, being the normal me. Um, it's been fun. Um, it's been interesting. It's been comedic at best, <laughs> um, but the overall state of my mental health has been better than it has been in months, even years. Um, I can't remember a time I've been this content in my life and the choices that I'm making. You know, this show and my current living situation are at a peak right now. Um, and, uh, I couldn't ask for a better situation. You know, things are getting better right here on this show. It's growing every day. Um, Getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I just wish the podcast, you know, numbers would, you know... Let me rephrase that. I wish the YouTube numbers would balance out with the podcast numbers. But hey, I'll take what I can get. Um, But it's... It's a lot of fun. Um... I never pictured myself being back in a situation where I could be happy again. But again, I've like I've said a thousand times before, you know, I've had to find happiness within myself and find um, the overall groove with who I am. And if I can't find that, I can't be happy regardless of the person I'm with, my family, my friends, whatever, you know. Um, and I'm a big believer in that. And I don't care what anyone else says. If you don't see that for the truth that it is, then you're never going to be truly happy. And I'm sorry. Um, you don't find happiness in love. You don't find happiness in family. You don't find happiness in your kids. You find happiness within yourself. And then everybody else just intensifies that happiness within you. But if you have no happiness within you, none of that 
happiness that, that comes from the family is going to be there. It's going to feel muted. It's going to feel wasted. And they're going to resent you for it. Um, you can fake it all day long, but everybody knows when you're faking it. So, you know, I've just been soaking it all in um, and really trying to really trying to accept what I've been dealt. And what I've been dealt isn't the worst thing in the world. It's pretty amazing. Um, I have you guys. And I have my family. You know, I have my kid. And I have just amazing family, you know, friends out there like Kat. And, you know, just... Things are good. And... It's scary to say that. Because now I'm just waiting for the other fucking shoe to drop. Because that's the... Um, that's just what happens. I mean, to me. It, it, you know, just when... Um, just when things are starting to look up and starting to m make sense. I mean, that's been my pattern my entire life. Whether that was done by me, because I'm not careful in my decisions. I'm very careless sometimes. I don't think things out. I just, I'm very reactionary. Or whether or not it was just the devilish hand I was dealt. Um, regardless of the reason, I have not, you know been the best I could be. You know, I thought I was supposed to be this guy that woke up every morning, went to work, you know, worked my nine to five, which I never really had a nine to five. I was always working retail and I worked retail for 15, 16 years between, you know, the, the two major companies that I worked for as a store manager and store director and everything like that. And, you know, between holidays and inventories and people calling out and vacations and stuff like that. I just was never happy. You know, I was constantly at work and while I enjoyed what I did, I don't think I ever loved it. So, you know, that is where I'm at now. Cause now I'm happy as hell. And I'm even more happy because my guest is on. So just give me one second here. All right, so let's just get right to it now because he's here. So my guest tonight, by the way, thanks for listening to all that crap um, in between. My guest tonight is a former executive for Capitol Records. He has worked with such bands as... Plain White Tees, Less Than Jake, and so many more. And I'm so, 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 so happy to have him on here with us today. So let's just get right to it and bring on the show, Mr. Lauren Israel. Hey, can you hear me? Hey there, Derek. How are you? Doing well, and yourself? I'm great. I am so sorry I am late. It is my fault. I take full responsibility. Please forgive me. Don't worry about it at all. I'm good at ad-libbing for 15 minutes. We're fine. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm so... Oh, my God. Well, please tell all your fans I'm really, really sorry, and I hope to make it up to them. Well, we're going to have a great conversation, so I'm not too worried about that. Like I said, I, I you know... I ad libbed a little bit there for you know the fifth, first fifteen minutes of the show because we are live, so um, awesome. so awesome. no big deal. Um, the transition worked out fine; everything was good. So we're here, and let's do this, right? So, how are you? Where are you at? I am just outside of DC. Whoa! Uh, in um, in what city? 
actually uh, DC proper? No, I'm in I'm in Virginia. Virginia, awesome. Yes. Awesome. Um, do you know where Glouch, 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 Gloucester County is? It's like a small I, suburb, really outside of Virginia. I've heard of it, but I'm not sure exactly where it's at. Awesome. Awesome. Why do you ask? Uh, there's a band out there that's really cool. They're called Little Death, and they're super cool. I'll have to check them out. There you go. Maybe I'll get bring them on the show. There you go. Because I've had um, I've had a shit ton of local bands on this show, um, especially over the summer when I was trying to you know bring some type of music back to people. I was putting on little concerts from local bands nearby, um, just to kind of you know have some type of you know live stream for these guys who didn't know how to do it themselves. So I, I'm all about you know helping the you know the local scene out because that's what makes music great yeah they're uh they're super cool they're kind of like uh they're cool man they're they're cool band so uh yeah they're called little death they're they're in a small small kind of section of virginia supposedly i've never been there i've been i've never i've been to dc but i've never been into the suburbs deep into virginia yeah i'm about 45 minutes to an hour depending on traffic outside of dc Right on, right on. Yeah, I love it out here. However, we can't get it to stop snowing. It's been snowing for like two weeks straight. It's crazy. What do you do when it snows out there? Like, I mean, listen, I live in Los Angeles, and, you know, my wife is from Georgia, and she hates the weather here. I'm like, how do you hate the weather? She goes, there is no weather, man. There's no weather. We don't have any weather. It's just constantly good. Well, that's how I felt when I lived in Florida. Um, I was in Florida for 25 years. I mean, uh, originally I'm from Ohio, and we moved to Florida when I was seven or eight years old. And it was just hot and rain all the time. And I absolutely hated it. Um, no seasons ever. I mean, they called 50-degree weather a cold front. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's just crap like that just bothered me. And then I moved here, and now I got seasons again. I got, you know, I had a white Christmas this past year, and, you know, just, you know, it's just, I love, I love being able to, you know, sit on my chair while I'm watching TV and look out my patio door and just see the flurries coming down. It's just, it's beautiful. I love it. Absolutely love it. That's great. That's great. So how are I, you doing? I'm, I'm great, man. I'm, uh, I'm doing my thing. I'm, I'm busy. I'm busier than I've ever been. So I, I'm very grateful. Um, that is a good thing. And, and, I, and I think I know why you're busier than you ever have been, and we're going to get into that here in a second, or at least my theory on it, and hopefully I'm right. Um, but okay. why don't you tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you've done and, you know, what brought you here today? Um, I'm a record producer. I specialize in helping emerging talent, you know, make their dreams come true. If their dream is to make a living and uh, tour and put out records and, you know, become very successful in the various platforms, be it Spotify or YouTube or, or, you know, national radio. Um, that's what I do. I've done it for bands like Plain White Tees, Jimmy World, Less Than Jake, Neon Trees. Um, a new band had a number one record that I uh, executive produced last year called uh, Down Like the Candidates. They did a song called Novocaine. So, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to evangelize the fact that, that the mystery of the music business is too mysterious. It doesn't need to be. You need to be smart. So that's what I do, man. Yeah. Um, I, I think you're hundred percent right. You need to be smart in this business. This business is, you know, will eat you alive if you just you know, have no plan and just go out there and hope for the best, you know, let, let's just play good music and everyone will, uh, you know, come to us. That That's not how it works. Unfortunately, no way. you know no what I mean? Very few people have ever made it that way. They got lucky with one, you know, with one good song and they just kind of tried to, you know, maybe live off that one song forever and didn't work for them. But I mean, y you've got to be punching people in the face for lack of a better term, this, you know, percent correct you must and you must look at it in my opinion like it's any other job whether you're you're a painter you know whether you paint houses or whether you're a landscaper or whether you're 
you know, putting in hardwood floors. How are you going to learn how to be a hardwood floor installer? You're going to learn by following somebody who's done it completely successfully. You essentially apprentice or you go to school or, and, or both. You learn how to paint houses by watching dudes paint houses successfully. You don't just all of a sudden say, you know what? I'm going to be a landscaper. No, you can't do it. You don't know what to do. Why do we think it's the same? Why do we think it's different when it's music? Why? Why do we think that just because we're in a band, we can be free, you know, free of any encumbrances about having other people try to help us? It's, it's, you can't. You gotta learn from someone who's done it really successfully. If, in fact, you want to be successful. That's, that's so true. Um, especially, you know, for some of these younger guys, I mean, getting the chance to tour, you know, with some of these bigger guys or just getting an opportunity to play one show with some of these bigger guys. And, you know, they're just happy to be there and they're not asking the right questions or, uh, you know, I've seen some of these guys just go on there, want to get drunk and they're just happy to be there and they don't sit around and listen and learn and ask questions and stuff like that. And then they're just stagnant. You know, they're just, again, they're so happy that they forget about the reason why they're there. Well, that's, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. And I'm trying to instill or evangelize my point that all the information for success is in front of us. All you got to do is accept, access it, accept it, bring it into who you are. In other words, um, adapt and do it over and over and over again. I got to tell you another thing. I think bands are not disciplined enough or artists, and I don't think they are prolific enough. And let me say this. Prolific means you must write at least a song a week. If you're not writing a song a week, the guy down the block who's on TikTok or SoundCloud or Audius or whatever is going to outpace you. And he's going to find fans before you if you're just putting out whatever that, you know, you're, you're waiting to put out music. You got to be prolific. Yeah, especially now. Yep. Um, when right now all these bigger bands are just sitting at home living off of their, you know, their severance, oh, not their severance, their residuals, you know, <laughs> and not putting out new music because they can't tour the you know, all the new music that's coming out is from these indie bands and these indie labels. And if you're not out in front of the, you know, right now, when everyone's out there competing for that spot that the, the bigger bands aren't utilizing, you're going to get forgotten about really quick. And that's one thing that I do fear about some of these bigger bands that they're not doing that. that they're not doing that exact same thing right now. They're not being prolific enough and they're sitting at home again, collecting those residuals because again, they're not writing new music because they can't tour. So what's the fucking point? And now all these new bands, all these indie labels and stuff like that are coming in and taking their spots. And the same thing can go either way. I, I completely agree. And I think fans want, want to hear new material that moves them from their favorite artist. It's not like it's going to fall on deaf ears. Just like you said, dude, you got to make a very good point. You got to knock really, really hard on doors. You can't just say, you got to knock hard. Um, and I, 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 I wish artists would have the determination that perhaps we're talking about, but I think that they don't for whatever reason. Yeah. And that's the thing that's sad. And, um, one of like, one of the examples that I've used countless times in the show, because it, it still hits home and true for me is a band that's on, you know, uh, your former label that you used to work for, Capital, Avenged Sevenfold. You know, three years ago, Matt got sick and couldn't sing, and they had to cancel their tour after they got done with Metallica, and they weren't able to promote the stage the proper way. And it's been three years. And now, Matt just came out a couple months ago saying, hey, we're working on a new album, but it might take us in another three years to put out because we can't go out and tour anyway. So just kind of hold off and wait, and we'll be fine. Did he really say three years? Yes. Did he use that number three? He said it, he said it could take us up to three more years to put out. 
in my opinion, um, that's I, he's in my opinion. I don't think he's thinking in 2021, 2022. That's my opinion. You know, far be it from me to uh, to criticize such a successful, insanely great band, but what's so hard dude about writing a song and releasing it yeah it's like you know I, i'm not yeah hard. it's not well i mean i'm and i'm one of the biggest event sevenfold fans on the face of the planet and i've got you know posters i've got a, my bat skull tattoo you know i have the dedication to jimmy you know on my my arm as well I'm a huge fan. And when I heard, when I read that email and saw all these different reports that came out, I was heartbroken. I was like, we've already have, we've already waited three years for something new. And now you're saying it could take up to three more years because you can't tour anyway, because our music needs to be toured. It's like, can you just give us a single something? It, it Listen, as I said, they are such a successful band. They've done it their way for so long, so well, far be it from me. But if I were as big of a fan as you were, I'd be as disappointed and then some, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, and that's another thing too, like some, and, and not just them, but some of these other uh, bigger bands, you know, that are even refusing to say, you know, we're not gonna put out a new album, but let's p do a virtual concert. Let's do something to stay in the eyes of our fans. I'm not even doing that. And you have, again, all these indie bands, all these other people do, going out there on Twitch or even going live on Instagram and just putting out new, well, not putting out new music, but at least performing acoustic or whatever on a weekly basis almost just to stay in front of their fans and say, hey, we're here. Bingo, bingo. I mean, for instance, you could some of these bands have a decent enough platform where they can actually do something that perhaps you do. You know, let's say, for instance, Matt wants to go on his platform and and interview Marilyn Manson. Oh God! Would you want to know what Marilyn Manson wants to talk about? Uh, right. I, I yeah. think Marilyn Manson's hiding right now. Well, but that's my point. You know, there's other things you could do creatively if you want to, but well, that's right. man, like you got, like you said, you got to knock hard. Yeah. You can't like a pansy you've got to break the door down all the time well look at ronnie radke of falling in reverse yeah the guy is a major twitch star he goes on there and just talks to the fans he goes on there and plays video games he collaborates with other creators um you know he does all this stuff and he's constantly on twitch and people are constantly flocking to him and you know they've put out three or four singles last year but that's all they put out. They don't. They, he said they're never going to put out another album, which I'm okay with. As that's long as they're fun. put, as long as they're putting out singles, I'm good with that. But yeah. like, but that's the kind of stuff. You know, another one, um, Matt Heafy of Trivium, is always on Twitch. The band is constantly doing, you know, virtual concerts. They're staying out in front of, you know, their audience. And some of these bigger bands than that are just, you know, where are they? And that, and that's the sad thing. It really is. I hope they get it right. I do too, because I, I want to see, hopefully in 2022, because I don't think it's going to be this year, because they're already starting to cancel you know shows that they already announced, like Coachella got canceled even after it was announced. Um, Aftershock is still announced for October, but I don't know if that's going to happen, um, you know, and then none of the, uh, the other festivals have been announced, you know, Rock on the Range, or excuse me, um, Sonic Temple, or whatever it's called now, and you know, Carolina Rebellion, Rock, Oklahoma, those have all not been announced at all. But, like, the ones that have been announced in Europe are starting to cancel. So it's like, right. you know, it, yeah. it, so it's going to be 2022 at least. But when that happens, are, are we going to see a whole bunch of new, you know, indie bands that have been grinding it out on these cards? Or are we going to see, you know, them forgotten about now that the bigger bands are back? You know, th that's a very good point I'd, I'd, like, I'd like to talk to you about. What would happen if in 2022, our favorite bands who were dormant, you know, said, okay, we're doing a spring 2022, you know, tour. And they came out and because they were so dormant for so long, nobody cared. Maybe there's going to be a band, dude, 
that replaces your your feelings, if you will, your emotional commitment to your favorite bands to them. That's an opening, dude. In other words, if I were a band and I said, you know what, man? This guy loves this band and I'm going to do whatever I can to fulfill that. You know, like build that relationship with, with building your fan base, like we talked about. I personally, I find that more compelling new music and new opportunities and new bands that turn me on than kind of pining away for the bands that are kind of asleep at the wheel. Yeah. And, and that's another thing that, that you just kind of brought to my attention. I didn't even think about before, but let's say for instance, you know, one of Mike's bands, okay. On earshot, you know, mm -hmm. blows up this coming year, still stays independent. Doesn't want to go major label, which I, I completely agree with at this point. Um, and they, you know, countless Spotify downloads are making a name for themselves. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden 22, 2022 comes around and um, Danny Wimmer presents, starts announcing all these different, you know, festivals and not one of those festivals features this band that blew up on the indie, you know, on Spotify and everything like that. And now all of a sudden all these bands that have been sat in dormant for the last two years, take up all the spots. And now this one band that, People have been craving to see, and they've been downloading, and they've been, you know, streaming this music, and all of a sudden they can't even go see them live because su such and such band that's so big, you know, now gets that spot. Dude, good point. What do you do? I think it gives, I think it gives the bands that I work with an opportunity to take that place. I do. I, I firmly agree with that. So I, I don't, you know, it's funny, dude. I don't have too much sympathy for artists who, who don't really cherish what they've got. They've got to really earn it every day. I mean, listen, dude, you know, you're doing your thing, right? You're, you're contributing to the scene in the way you do it. And if you weren't doing it every day, every day, someone else would do it and they yeah. would catch up to you. So if you can do it, why can't our favorite bands do the same thing? Exactly. And that's one, one thing that people always ask me about. You're a podcast. Why do you do five shows a week? Why the fuck not? <laughs> you know, right. you know, I'm, I, I've, because I've taken this show in the last year from a hundred downloads an episode to 50,000 downloads an episode. And I've done that because I'm always in front of the fans. I'm always in front of the people. You know, not many people can say that they did that. And I, I live my life and dedicate my life to this platform because there's, again, like you said, there's bands out there that deserve a platform and they're not getting that platform. And you know what? I have no problem. I love talking to indie bands because we can talk music. We can talk about them. We can talk anything that we want and just have a great freaking time with it. And I absolutely love it. And that's one of the reasons why I do this show on a damn daily basis because of it helps me. It helps them. It helps everybody. Bingo. Bingo. And I just wish some other people would understand that. <laughs> so you have had a hell of a career so far. I mean, up to this point, I mean, and even now going forward, I mean, it's only going to get bigger for you. Um, you know, to this point, I mean, what has been your greatest moment in music? Um. Well, I'll tell you, I know this sounds totally corny, but continuing to be curious and excited about, in about two hours, a band is supposed to be sending me a, or one of my, my mixer is going to be sending me a mix of a song that we recorded last week that I'm super excited to hear. It's the continued curiosity and the continued stoke of like anything can happen they could send me a song and it could change my state it could change my life and that's what i'm most excited about honestly dude it's not the low points it's not the high points it's the fact that i am still completely engaged i'm still completely interested and curious and i see a lot of producers who i grew up with um, that don't have that same zeal, that same um, curiosity. So I feel very grateful that I still have it. 
that's that's amazing. That's pretty badass. However, I do have one gripe with you. You know, for the last 20 years or so, no, maybe not even that long, every time I go into a grocery store, uh oh, I hear a certain song, and it's 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 like on repeat in every grocery store across the nation, and it's you know. Do you, like, you know exactly what song I'm talking about, and I'm sure everyone that's sitting in there driving going, oh, yeah, I know exactly that song. Um, Hey There, Delilah. Do you ever... Well, okay, now, I got to <laughs> tell you something. I got to... Okay, so I get it. Guilty as charged, right? But if you knew Tom Higginson, who was the singer and the writer of that song, you would be his best fucking friend because he's into music. He's into the shit that we're into. He's yeah. into new bands. He's, we just talked the other day and he's like, so what are you listening to? And I'm telling you, dude. <laughs> yes. Um, and God bless him. Yeah, I mean, it, to be honest with you, it's still a great song. And whenever it comes on, I hear it, I listen to it, I sing it out loud. It's a great fucking song. It just, again, it's just become that grocery store anthem <laughs> it's on repeat on every grocery store but to have a song that's that prolific still 20 oh, was it, it's been about 20 years hadn't it longer than that well i have more than that i have the middle by jimmy world i have neon trees everybody talks and animal yeah all the plain white tea songs that that we that, that we did and another one that you'll probably hear is novocaine by by uh the unlikely candidates so to be honest with you, dude, I've heard that one too. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest with you, I'm very grateful that I've been involved in those songs. I'm sure. But I got to be honest with you. I'm more interested in my failures. Now hear me out than my successes because my failures tell me more about me and how to be better than my successes. The successes just help, help, keep the lights on you know that's just the truth the, the success is just get me going you know just it's kind of like i'm a junkie dude of course I'm a junkie. the fucking success is just bring the bring the candy man to the house all the time that's it yeah you know but i'm a junkie for something that's bitching bitching i love shit that's bitching so what are you listening to right now who are some of your favorite bands out there? Not and not the necessarily the ones that you're producing, but like just in general. Um, I have to tell you, as corny as he is, I kind of like Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> I, I like um, uh, Dua Lipa. Um, I like uh, I like Oliver Tree. Um, I'm listening to a lot of shit, you know? What else am I listening to? I like Billy, uh, I like Billy Eilish. Um, really? I did not see that coming. Well, I, it's funny. I think she's super disciplined. Um, very disciplined writer. And I appreciate that. I can understand. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love this band called The Who. Have you heard The Who? Yeah. Yes. Two? Yeah, I am not a fan of them at all. I fucking what? I am not a fan of them at all. Why is it that I fucking love them, dude? You you know, my girlfriend says the exact same thing. I I I cannot get into them. That I mean, I that that sound is just not for me at all. <laughs> um, oh, I, I'm I'm loving them. Yeah, I mean, th those that's just some of the stuff I'm listening to. And I, you know, I'm, I, I I listen to, you know, I, I produce a lot of music. So I, I've, I've got tons of uh, demos and I, uh, I don't listen to enough new music because I'm listening to um, music that, cut, that I'm working on. So those are some things I like. That's awesome. Um, all good stuff. I mean, like I said, the who is... Definitely different. And by the way, for those of you who are listening, the who is spelled H-U, 
not WHO, not it's not the same band. Um, <laughs> but um, they are they're def they're definitely different. Um, but no, like see, I'm like right now I'm in big into a band called Ice Nine Kills, um, a band out of um, Croatia, um, uh, Ginger, um, the Butcher Babies. You know, I'm I'm into all you know. Obviously, in this moment, um, another one, Hailstorm. Uh, you know, there's you know there's so much good music out there. I have a very close friend that represents, I think, eighty percent of the bands you uh, you talk about, and he turns me on to all of that stuff pretty early. So yeah, yeah I I like Ice Night. They have a new song, a new a new song. Ice Night Kills has a new song and a new video that I think is super bitching, but I don't remember the song. I don't remember the name. Well, they just came out with one this week. This week, right? And it was a cover of um, an Elvis Presley song. I can't help falling in love with you. And they did it in their style. I mean, it's not metal in any which way, shape, or form, but they did it in their creepy way, and I fucking love it. I'm I'm wearing an Ice Nine Kills shirt right now. <laughs> um, I'm sure that you uh, you love Matt Good, the producer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. super talented. Yeah, I'm a I'm a huge Ice Nine Kills fan. Um, I've been working with their uh, with their PR, and I'm supposed to have them on soon, hopefully. So that's 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 a goal of mine to get them on the show, um, but you know there I have so many goals for this year to get them on. But like Ginger's another one I need to get on the show because Tatiana, man, that that chick has some of the best vocals in all of music right now. Not not female, just music in general. That chick, you know, the lead singer of Ginger, is just amazing. Um, wow. Yeah, she's absolutely st just stunning with her vocals. So like, she's another one I want to have on the show. I mean, there's just so much, again, good music that would be, you know, from especially like the indie bands and then, well, some would consider like the mid Carter bands like that are still out, you know, I don't consider them that, but you know, mm -hmm. like, like the, you know, the Ice Nine Kills and the Gingers and stuff like that. But again, they're, they're some of my favorite bands out there today. And I'm just enjoying what, what they're putting out because they're still putting out stuff, you know, I mean, Ginger's like, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and put out a couple new songs. Oh, and you know what? Let's go ahead and put out a uh, live CD. Just, just, just so we can stay in front of our fans. Let's go ahead and put a live CD out. Oh, and then Ice Nine Kills did the exact same thing. You know, they, you know, they're they're still out there. They're still doing stuff, and it's so great to be able to have that kind of stuff with them. And then also these indie bands that I'm just now getting in, introduced to for the first time. Some of them, and some of them I've heard you know for a long time, and then getting the opportunity to talk to them, and then then all of a sudden see them trending on freaking Spotify. It's like, hell yes, that is what music needs to happen. That's what needs to happen right now. Sorry. Quentin, simmer down, please. <laughs> well, I, hold on. Quentin. No, no, no. Please. Yes, 100%. And that's what we've been talking about. These bands putting out these songs, and you're digging it, and you're getting more involved. You're getting more emotionally attached. You're getting more fervent. You're talking about them. It helps everybody. Right? A absolutely. It really does. Because um, music is a universal language. You know, it, it speaks, you know, across countries. It, it speaks across, you know, war. It, it speaks across, you know, party lines, it, it, across culture and you know, race and religion, it, it just knows no bounds. And music is the one thing I think that unifies us in ways that other things can't. You're right. You're totally right. You're 100% right. And it's been doing that. It's, 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 it's been, uh, it's been a constant source of that kind of solace for a lot of people for a long time. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I love doing is when I go to a big festival you know, is looking and just stopping for a second and looking around at the crowd. You know, you could see every color, every race, every creed, every religion, every gender, you know, and they're all just there to have a good time and, you know, watch some music. And sometimes they're there just because they want to be there and they don't like any of the bands. They're just there to have a good time. And again, that is what music really is. And it's, it's amazing to me, especially on the rock side. You know, 
I don't think any other genre of music has the unity that rock does, in my opinion. Because you can't, well, I mean, you can't go to some of these shows and see that type of stuff. But at a rock show, you see that all the time. You make a very good point. The rock world, at, at least the, the music business rock world, very, very small and very committed to helping one another. Much, 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 much more than any genre of music that, that I've worked in and around. The people who, who do rock music are so passionate and helpful for, uh, for everyone. It's true. Very, very true. Yeah. Um, it, it's, uh, it's quite, again, it's quite awesome. Because, again, especially the rock world. And rock is coming back stronger than it ever has. And it hasn't gone away, dude. It I know, no, and I know. Away. But in people's eyes, it has. But now I think it's starting to make – it's never gone away for me. It, it never has, never will. I've never thought rock died. You know, I was actually talking to the lead singer of September Morning, Emily Lazar, not too long ago. And um, she was saying, you know, rock is dead, and we're trying to bring it back. And I'm like, you know, this is somebody that's actually in the business, you know, somebody that has a major label that – you know, that is a, you know, a major band out there. And she's like, you know, rock is dead. She's like, not in my eyes, but in the fans eyes. So, you know, how can we bring that back? And I'm like, I, I, I agree, but yet disagree at the same time. And cause I, I don't think fully that's true, but at the same time, I think the people that are, have not paid attention to it in a long time are starting to pay attention to it again. The, the fans have never let go, but the people that, you know, used to be a fan or the people that never was a rock person are starting to gravitate toward it, you know, and you have people to think like Miley Cyrus, you know, another person that I've been listening to is Miley Cyrus lately. You know, the album that she put out back in December, uh, the Lonely Hearts or whatever it's called, sounds like Joan Jett out of the 80s. It's fantastic. It's a great fucking album. And I'm like, it blew me away. I gotta listen. I gotta listen. Dude, it is a great album. Like, no shit. I mean, I was never a Miley fan. But, you know, back in, what was it, September, when they did the Save Our Stages for um, the Whiskey A Go-Go, she did a cover of the Cranberry Zombie. And she did stuff that I had never, like, I mean, with her voice and the way she, the way she was singing up on stage, never have I ever seen anything like that from her. And I immediately became a huge fan of hers. And then the the, the Broken Hearts Club, whatever it's called, um, that came out in December is a fantastic throwback retro 80s Joan Jett album. And it's people like that that are starting to say, hey, wait a second. Let's go ahead and get some more exposure. And her fans are like, oh, wait a second, Rock. I, I have no problem with that. Let's go ahead and do that. I think a lot of bands are starting to do that, you know, especially with like some of like some of these rap artists that wear metal shirts and they're like, Oh wait, m my favorite rap artist listened to so-and-so let me, let me check them out. And I think that's happening more now than it ever has to. Agreed. Agreed. Totally agreed. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, the, the music industry right now is in a state that it's never been in before, but I think it's the, I think it's op more open than it ever has been, too. And I'm just waiting for a new band to come out here and just take it by storm. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. You're waiting for something that's going to blow your mind and move you and make you run faster, make, your, make you go faster in your car. And that's what I live for, dude. That's what I live for, too, every day. Send me something that blows me away. So who are some of the bands that you're producing right now that – um, that you're really excited about getting stuff out there for? Um, I hate having to ask, answer this like this, but I don't like to talk about what I'm doing because I don't like people judging the music through my prism. You know, if they don't like me, if they don't like my, uh, like my work, you know, they used to tell me that everything I did sounded like Jimmy World, you know, so I don't really talk about the artist that I'm producing because I want you to listen to it without saying, oh, this is that this is that band that Lauren 
is producing, it's going to sound like every other band that Lauren produces. So if you don't mind, uh, I want to pass on that, you know, because I just want people to listen to the music with the freedom of not having to go through my prism. I got you. No, that makes 100% sense. Um, Because, you know, another person that um, has that same type of uh, aura about them is like Bob Rock. You know, any anytime somebody says, "Oh, you know, oh, Bob Rock is producing this album," um, oh, it's gonna sound just like Metallica. You know, yeah. and, and and you know, and that's not fair to Bob because um, he's a he's a much better producer than just you know the sound of Metallica. So just, I, I completely get that. Sure, he's a super producer, but so yeah, I mean, um, I would like to send you some stuff if you don't mind. Please. My email is wide open for your stuff, man. And also, uh, my show is wide open to anybody you want to, you know, send my way as well. Because I'm more than happy to, you know, be the megaphone for them as well. Awesome. I will. Dude, um, you have, again, between, you know, Less Than Jake, which is one of my favorite bands out of the 90s. You know, and Plain White Tees and Jimmy Eat World, which, again, is one of the best bands coming out of the 90s as well. You know... You have touched so many lives with the music that you make um, and produce. And that is a that's something that lives on with us forever. You know, there's not many things in this world to where you cannot hear a song for 20 years come on your radio and still remember every single word to that song. You know, you can't you'll that doesn't happen with movies you don't you can't pop in a movie and you know still remember every little bit from that movie that you haven't seen in 20 years it's like it's like watching it brand new again but music has a different place in our mind and in our hearts and it touches you and if that song it does what it's intended to do 20 30 years from now you might forgotten about it and then you pick up your whatever and listen to it it's there and you it's it's like you heard it for the first time again, but you know every single word, you know every single riff, you know that solo, like the back of your hand, and it's just like, fuck, this is amazing. And nothing else in this world can do that. You and, make very good points. And for for you to have touched so many lives, including myself, I mean, even with Hey Little, hey Little Delilah, you know, um, you know, it's... It, I can't say thank you enough for what you've done and what you've done for the music world. You're welcome. I love it. I'll continue. I'm going to send you that band that's over there in in Virginia. I want you to see what you think. Absolutely. And, I, and you know, um, I'll definitely, uh, if I get an opportunity, I'll bring them on as well. Because, uh, again, I love profiling new artists, indie artists, because, you know, they deserve a national platform just like everybody else. And with my 50 or 60,000 downloads, I'm going to take, you know, every opportunity to do that for them. So I have no problem with that. And I appreciate it. Awesome, dude. It was a, it was a pleasure speaking to you, please. I'm so sorry. I was late. I'm such an asshole, but you have been such a great host, such a great host. I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. All right. You have a great one now. Have a good night. Bye-bye. All right, guys. And that's our show. And, and for all of the, uh, the lovely flat earthers that have joined my fucking show, just to come on here and comment and ha- hate on me, and let's see here. Let's see what some of these f- people have said. The Earth is Flat Tubby, worst podcast in history. Um, Lauren is not producing it right now. That is why he doesn't want to answer the question. Um, snore. Um... Haven't you ever heard of Slim Fast, Lose Some Weight, Tubby? I I absolutely fucking love you people. Thanks you very much for the views. Thanks for the comments who help my algorithm. And you are the people that want to shit on me, and yet that is how you shit on me. Guess what, bud? You post an opinion, and it gets me bigger. I'm a lot smarter than you think I am. Everything I did was planned. And I'm sorry that hurts you. But you know what? I don't give a fuck about the the YouTube views of whether or not I get a thousand or a million or five. I don't care about YouTube views. 
because this episode is going to go out to podcasts tonight and get 50 to 60 thousand downloads over the next 30 days like every single one of my episodes um so you know what suck on that because all you did was get my name in your mouth thank you for that smiling and you can say david weiss destroyed me all you want but i'm the one smiling I haven't told my fans to come after you guys at all, now have I? No, but he told you to come after me and comment. And I appreciate that he did that. So whether you like it or not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here to stay. And I'm here to stay with just like what I did just now. Talking to major producers, talking to major bands, talking to major actresses and actors and comedians and everything else in between. And I'm so sorry that I don't... But you know what? I'm doing just fine. Obviously, you're not. Because you'd rather come on here and bully somebody than just take the high road. Which I have done to this point. But not tomorrow. I have a response for it coming for you guys, so I appreciate it. But I'm not going to let them down the episode that I just did with that amazing gentleman that has been a part of your life for the last 30 years, whether you realize it or not. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. Come back tomorrow. The band Fences will be on. Yes, the band that has opened for Macklemore and everything else like that will be on the show tomorrow night. Fantastic episode coming in for your Friday. Thank you very much, guys, for being here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So, please come back again tomorrow for more. But until then, stay happy, stay healthy. And as always, stay heavy. Fuck the flat earthers. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. Hey guys, have you ever wondered how you can help support the channel and look cool at the same time? Do yourself a favor. Go to dckproductions.com forward slash shop and get yourself some of the coolest apparel out there. Whether you just want one of our basic logos in a t-shirt or hoodie form or whether or not you want to get one of our great graphic tees that are just funny as hell and also just released is our brand new line of mental health shirts which help raise awareness and 25 percent also go to charity so please do yourself a favor again go to dckproductions.com forward slash shop for the best apparel out there thank you very very much